This episode will be released in the middle of ADHD and Menopause Awareness Month. And the reason I bring this up is because I'm going to be talking about unicorns. And that may sound funny, and I, I get it. I am going to be talking about unicorns because that was the mascot of the school that I went to. I am from the class of 1988 from the North Carolina School of Science and Math. And it's a blessing to have been at that school. And I just returned from my 35th reunion. So I'll share a lot more about that in today's episode. Hey, I'm Hillary Baggett, host of Hill Talks Momentum in Midlife podcast. As an occupational therapist turned entrepreneur after 50, I'm on a mission to connect, motivate, and inspire women over 40, 50, and 60 to know that no matter what's going on, you can reach for your dream. Today, I'm definitely sharing some of my lessons learned about attending a reunion. And this is from, you know, the Women Supporting Women series. And I was so excited to see some of my girlfriends from back when I was 16, 17, and 18. And not everybody is going to have that same experience, right? So I hope that you'll listen in and hear some special facts about this school, the benefits of being a unicorn, and a little bit of what what is it that keeps people from a reunion. So hopefully it's not a little bit of everywhere, but you'll still enjoy. I'm going to dive right in with a little bit from the... Um, commencement speaker, who was a graduate of the class of 1986. Listen in. The reason I bring this up in October is because one of the things that people with ADHD deal with is not living up to their potential. And sometimes women after the age of 40, 50, and 60 are wondering kind of the same thing. Did I, did I live up to my potential in my life? Is there something left in me? What else do I want to do? So I ran across the graduation speech from Dr. Laura Gerald. She was a member of the NCSSM. That's what the North Carolina School of Science and Math is called. And she was a member of the graduating class of 1986. So I was not there at the same time. She graduated and then I started the fall of 1986. So she actually talks about invoking the imagery of the school's mascot, remember it's a unicorn, whether you believe in it or not, to inspire the graduates to live up to their potential. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But sometimes there are things we need to do in order to not just live up to our potential, but to show up, to show up for ourselves. And I just thought it was really beautiful. So at the end, I will share a note that I wrote to a friend of mine that I got to stay with uh, right before I attended this reunion. And it's words of encouragement that whether you're dealing with ADHD, menopause issues, hopefully it will encourage you. So back to the unicorn. And whether or not you believe in unicorns, right, it usually looks like a horse with a a horn on it, and a lot of times they fly. And the kind of motto of this school of science and math is, I'll probably butcher it, so forgive me, Maius Opus Movio, accept the greater challenge. And that's why this really stood out to me about living up to potential, accepting the greater challenge. I know a lot of my friends are on fire for what is next for them in life after the age of 40 and 50, but some of them are wondering, I think it's too late for me. And this message is, no, it's not too late. All right, let's dig in. So I'm going to quote Dr. Gerald here. She said, to me, to be an NCSSM unicorn is to have both roots and wings. Well, I had to pause there because I'm like, wait, how can a unicorn have roots? It just did not make sense to me. But she continued with, we have roots in a place with a rich history of giving, collaboration, innovating to solve problems and make life better for the residents of the state of North Carolina. Now, 
the campus in Durham is actually the location was the old Watts Hospital, which does have rich, rich history of providing medical care. In fact, one of my classmates was born in Watts Hospital well before it became NCSSM. And I think I talk about it a little bit later on, but the school was formed as a public high school, higher level learning for kids who are oriented in science and mathematics. But I'll tell you a little spoiler alert, man, their art department was amazing. And that was totally my favorite. All right, I'm going to continue back with what Dr. Gerald says. And as NCSSM graduates, we also have wings. Flying. Fly to do all the things that feed your soul and passion. And this is what's really important for women over the age of 40. Because we need to be rooted in our history and acknowledge what we've been through. But we also need to fly forward towards those things that feed our soul and our passion. Dr. Gerald also continues, give back to the people and places who need you. At the root of our most at the root of most of our problems is the inability to see full humanity of all human beings, regardless of race, gender, age, sexual orientation, or country of birth. We need your help to solve that problem. We apparently need mythical creatures to do that. We need unicorns. And that's the end of the part that I'm quoting of Dr. Gerald. And I think the part is that we need to see other people as human and we need to see ourselves as human. We are not infallible and we need each other in order to get through life. That's the whole point of community. So it just really stood out to me that she was talking about this. And now I'll dig a little bit. Actually, I'm not even digging deeper. I'm probably going more shallow with talking about the reunion. Have you been to a class reunion, whether it was high school or college? Well, for me, I went to a residential high school, boarding school, and it was public, and it was only my junior and senior year of high school. And it was a pretty significant event for me in my life. And you got to live away, and it was a little bit like going away to college at 16, but you had dorm assistants and resident advisors that were looking out for you. And... I went back for yet another reunion, and this was the 35th, and we've had reunions almost every five years, I'm pretty sure. Maybe the first one was like a year or two later. But the school is so worth it to me. Would it be worth it to you to return to your old high school or college, some people for middle school, to meet up with them? Well, the barriers for a lot of people are the fear, right? Who is going to be there? Will I know anyone? Will they recognize me? Well, yeah, some of us look very different. Although I will say the first night, one of our classmates said, well, Hillary, you fall into that category of looking exactly the same, but your hair is a lot shinier, sparkly. And he was right. I am very fortunate that I've made a lot of lifestyle choices to eat well, stay hydrated, and move a fair amount to stay in pretty good shape, period. Oh my goodness, if you just heard me say that, I'm so used to dictating things and that I have to add punctuation. So forgive me, my little bit of humanness shows through. Well, the other thing that people worry about is if their body has changed, maybe they've gained a lot of weight, which we naturally do as we age. Maybe they're not walking as well as they used to because we have knee problems, hip problems, back problems. Maybe they're no longer with the same person that they were. Maybe they're with a new person. Maybe they're single, divorced, have a new child. I mean, at these reunions, we met someone that was doing something unique every way we looked and everywhere we turned. So not everyone has gotten married and not everyone has had children. And that's okay. That's not a determination for your success in life of who you've attached yourself to or the choices. It's not even the amount of money in your bank account or what car you drive. I was fortunate enough to borrow my mom's 2000 Toyota Camry and drive it. And 
I thought, well, if somebody looks at me sideways, well, that's fine because I'm not defined by my car. So I'm glad I went, but I'll be honest, I was pretty nervous. And I really like a lot of these people I went to high school with. And some people worried about what will be the response of others? Will people recognize me or want to talk to me? For the introverts in our group, the question was, do I have to talk to people? Why do they always have these in these loud areas? I mean, I think that's a really valid question. If you want people to talk and have conversations, is it necessary that there's alcohol and loud music so that you have to shout over each other? I mean, you would have thought that we went to some sports game that so many of us were hoarse, but we were just trying to have a conversation. I certainly hope for next time that I could maybe even be more helpful in planning the reunion. In fact, I reached out to one of the gals who planned ours because I wanted to create a little workshop of how could we make it easier for people to create a reunion. Some people just feel overwhelmed and wonder, where do I even start? So big shout out. Thank you to Anya for um, her input on this. So we'll see how that goes. But we stayed out late and I love to go to bed about 10 o'clock at night, really. But there were these people that I hadn't seen, some of them in five years, some of them I hadn't seen in 35 years. And there were a lot of emotions for me that came back. For our class, we do a tour of the campus, which has changed quite a bit over the years. And it's really kind of fun and sad to remember where where I was in my life, where I was in my family life, what I was thinking about, worrying about. One of the highlights for me, though, was seeing my favorite art teacher, Joe Lyles. And he still shows up to these reunions. He's no longer a professor there. But he was pivotal in helping me understand what is it I want to do with my life? And creative problem solving was really what it came down to. But he helped me figure out how to put together a portfolio and apply to design school at North Carolina State University. I was so nervous. And I look back at my 18-year-old self feeling nervous. And then I look at my present self at 53. And some of those currents of nervousness and anxiety still run true. How is it for you if you visit maybe your childhood home, your hometown, maybe you still have family that lives there? What is it like to step on the grounds of your former school? Does everything look smaller? Well, even the cafeteria that they had renovated at this school looked even smaller than before. What would you say to the teacher that made the greatest impact on your life? I just wanted to sit down and listen to all of Joe Lyle's wisdom for life. He's hiked the Appalachian Trail. His son, who I used to babysit at school, is a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. Unbelievable. But then I realized I was only 13 years older than him. So how could that be? Sometimes I think there's a big humility, the humility belt, I often call it of returning to a place that brings back memories of like, oh, was I a nice person then? Was I goofy? Was I insecure? Probably yes, yes, and yes. You know, why do we think we need to be somehow perfect? I think that's what really holds us back in life, of being in relationships with other people. What is it like for you? I would love for you to shoot me a note at... Hillary Baggett at gmail.com and tell me what, who's your favorite teacher and what impact did they have on your life? I mean, for me, since my last reunion, people didn't even know I have a podcast and I certainly don't want to like brag about it. Um, but it's just sharing with what's going on in your life. So this episode has maybe been a little bit of everywhere, but bottom line, I'm glad I showed up to my 35th reunion. I'm glad I got some sleep. I'm grateful for the people who did all the work. I'm so grateful for the teachers who showed back up. And I'm also grateful for the current students who shared a little bit of insight into what their current experience is at the school. I mean, it, it changed my life. The friends that I'm the closest with in my life 
Most of them came from this school. And so overall, it's a net positive. And I bet for you, if you go to a reunion, hopefully it'll also be a net positive for you. Let me know. Before I wrap everything up, I just wanted to make sure that I did a shout out to the women supporting women from the class of 88. Go unicorns. And a big thank you to Emily, to Anya, to Julie. You were some of the warrior unicorns that gave us the roots to enjoy this experience and the wings to fly, to be there, to be present, and to remember it's important to keep giving back and to reaching out. So big thank you. Do you know someone who is over the age of 40 that might enjoy listening to some of these stories or interviews? Please help me by sharing this episode. Ask your friends to subscribe and tell them a little bit about it. You know, the goal is so that people will know that you're not alone. In case you think that some people plan their podcast interviews months and months in advance, sometimes we wake up at 5.30 in the morning and pop out an episode. Just be keeping it real. But for me at the reunion, having important conversations that go deeper, especially as we age, whether we're talking about being diagnosed with ADHD after age 50, dealing with perimenopause, menopause, pelvic floor issues, that's really what matters the most to me. Because sometimes we need to learn new ways of thinking as we grow. And even the alumni versus the current student soccer game, there were some really great, meaningful conversations that happened there. In fact, my daughter showed up and it kind of blew some people's mind because she looks a lot like me, especially at that age, even though she's over the age of 22. And my question for you, though, is, Would you do something different and be more compassionate towards yourself if you did go back to a reunion, if you did get diagnosed with ADHD, if you did have to show up for pelvic floor physical therapy? Could you be bold and brave and do something different with your life, like be a guest on a podcast or create your own? I wanted to leave you with these final thoughts, and it's some encouragement from the note that I wrote to my friend who was also the younger sister of an NCSSM classmate. I mean, you know, these relationships have just continued and continued and continued. And I really, really like it. So here's the message, and this might be important for some of you. I hope you know and remember, you are enough. You are strong enough. You are good enough. You are worthy of receiving all the best things in life. You are worthy of friends who adore you, worthy of setting and maintaining healthy boundaries, and worthy of receiving love and help. You're worthy regardless of that need and drive for perfection, that performance, or the expectations of others, whether it's family members or friends. I even told my friend at the end, I'll copy this for myself because so often it's easier for me to say sweet things to other people and I need to hear and believe this for myself too. So if you're listening out there, know that you're not alone. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for listening. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you being an essential part of the Women's Midlife Network. We're connecting women. We're sharing stories and inspiring change. And not just for now, but for decades to come. I am so thankful for you. And I always hope you feel the love. Until next time, this is Hillary Baggett with Hill Talks Podcast. Let's move forward in midlife 